on on to the last album of the night in a record setting pace which i'm very impressed by uh, we've got faith no more and angel dust and in the opening montage you heard land of sunshine and now you're going to hear midlife crisis Okay, Matt, what are the stats? So, yeah, Faith No More, uh, is their album Angel Dust comes in at number 96 in the 1990s on Best Ever Albums, number 7 in 1992, number 538 of all time. It's Faith No More's highest rated album on Best Ever Albums, did not make Rolling Stones list, and Faith No More is ranked number 265 of overall artist rankings on Best Ever Albums. Okay, this album was released June 8th, 1992. Uh, they are from San Francisco, California, and they formed in 1979. We've only covered their single, Epic, from their previous album, The Real Thing, in Season 4 Bonus 1, Fistful of Singles episode, where John and I talked about 20 singles. And uh, mm-hmm. so check that out. Um, they have seven solo albums, and this is their fourth. They are classified as alt metal, hard rock, heavy metal, funk metal, and then kind of add alt to anything and, and, they're put, and put in there. Influenced by Frank Zappa, Brian Eno, Killing Joke, Public Image Limited, the Residents, Parliament, and Funkadelic, and a bunch of other bands. Similar artists, Primus, Living Color, Rob Zombie, Jane's Addiction, Porno Papyrus, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Their highest charting single is Epic, which reached 9 in 1990. And Angel Dust is their highest rated um, album, reaching 10 on the Billboard 200 in July of 92. Some fun facts. Uh, they took a one and a half year break from their previous album before they started working on this. The, Mike Patton is the lead vocals on this album, and he's actually the third lead singer they had. He joined before their previous album, The Real Thing, and, and sang on Epic, so same carryover there. The album title was chosen by keyboardist Roddy Bottom because, quote, it summed up what they, the band, did perfectly, and, quote, it's a really beautiful name for a really hideous drug, and that should make people think. So take that for what you will. They were... There were many samples used on this album to the point where the record label execs were concerned. And they promoted this album on the European leg of the Use Your Illusion tour with Guns N' Roses and Soundgarden, and then continued on in North America with Guns N' Roses and Metallica. So quite the pedigree there, um, touring-wise, in my opinion. And I'm very interested in what you guys think of this album. So let's start with John. Angel Dust. This was the first album we've covered in a long time where I just did not like this album. I, it combines many, many features of things that are not easy for me. It, it had a, I knew I was in trouble when I saw a swan on the front cover because I, I think of Faith No More as at my core being sort of an aggressive band that has a little bit of a hybrid rock rap element but i know that that's only a small feature of them so Mm -hmm. i knew inherently like okay i think of epic and i think of of stuff like that but i know there's other elements to them so now i'm going to explore the other elements of faith no more and i saw a swan and i said "Ooh, this looks vaguely prog rock concept albumy and i kind of got like queen's reich's like operation mind Mm -hmm. crime but a a lesser version of it. And I was not super high on that album. Um, yeah, I would c- c- call this album part prog rock, part um, o- o- like kind of metal, but like down downgraded prog metal, I would yep. say, along the way. There's an attempt to be sort of art rock, I think, at times on this. Uh, the, the lyrics just did nothing for me on this out i i wasn't quite sure i kept trying to see if there was a theme of this as like a concept album but it doesn't look lyrically i know i thought it might have been too yeah yeah. there was and then at the end when it it ends with like the theme from midnight cowboy and like a cover (laughs) of easy like sunday morning (laughs) but at that point i already was sort of 
not loving this album and thinking to myself, this might be the first album we've covered in a while where it's going to get like a unquestioned thumbs down. And yeah. those sealed the deal for me because I'm like, this is the definition of was not needed. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't it... jizz lobber, John. That wasn't the song that <laughs> crack Hitler, <laughs> I, I, I... <laughs> crack Hitler and jizz lobber. I, yes. I, I, I'll try to say something that I thought the beginning of the album was especially the first four or five songs was was better than the rest of the album i, I obviously i know the song midlife crisis which i don't hate it, it i think it's the best song on the album by light years and coming into it i just sort of only vaguely liked midlife crisis it certainly wasn't a song where I'm like oh that's a great one so i was like oh i'll know this song no let's see if it's like that but not a lot was like that and i wasn't baffled by this album but i certainly um did not look forward to listening to it a second time. I tried to clear the deck and go in, but um, it did not benefit from a second listen. Um, and it was long as well. Uh, it just had a lot going against it. So, yeah, man, I, I, uh, I, this, one, this one has to go in the thumbs down category for me. Uh, I didn't, I, I'm open to hearing what, what s- strikes others, but there's just, there wasn't much here for me. Let me uh, clean the stack before the ornithologists get all over me. It's an egret on the cover. Of I was the about album, to say. Swan, <laughs> but... I don't know. I just, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a white bird with like a, 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 a backlit white with like blue light behind it. So yeah. It's got a very you know. long pointed beak, John. Come on. That doesn't look like a swan. I mean, it's. Yeah, it looks like something that like it looks like a cover of like something from the Never Ending Story or video game music, like famously genres that I am not a fan of in either yeah. front. So, mm-hmm. oh man, what about okay, Matt? What about you? Uh, Are you coming uh, to the defense, uh, of Angel I, Dust. I, I want to first say though because I did just fin- I just finished Slash's autobiography, oh, and nice. he did talk about when Faith No More was on tour with them, and I guess like they had to have a sit down with Mike Patton because Mike Patton would get up, the lead singer, he would get up on the stage and you know during their set and he'd be just like shitting all over guns and roses like bad oh, mouthing them and stuff and so slash is like dude what are you t-? <laughs> and like talks he has a huge feud him. with red hot with anthony ketis in particular too he's got major bad blood with him too yeah i think that there was something about ketis was upset that he was copying his mannerisms in the epic video or something like that mm-hmm. but right. um anyway uh so i was excited to listen to this record because it's it's i i have I actually own the real thing on cassette tape. I had that as a, as, as a kid because I liked mm-hmm. Epic so much. It's one of those albums that's super long, and I never really got into the album. I listened to like maybe the first half of it, and it never really caught my attention enough to really you know um, to delve into the record itself, even though I bought it. But anyway, um, and I do remember like throughout the years, I've run into people here and there that have talked about how this is a, such a great album. You know, oh faith, oh this it's. The real thing's okay, but really, this is, you know, um, Angel Dust is where it's at. So I was excited to listen to it. And um, I, I I think I'm higher than John on it, but I, I, I'm i not going to be, like, swinging for the fence and saying this is, like, the most amazing thing. This is a um, – it's definitely prog for sure. You know, yeah. it's got that and – it's, and it's got it's, – it's certainly metal as well. That's why I think it's an interesting – alt-metal is, like, a term that, 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 you, that you mm-hmm. said or that was thrown around. So it's like, okay, alt-metal, it's another one of those – at somewhat fitting, um, but there's definitely a prog element to it. But the prog here, I, I think overall, I think my biggest criticism was I just couldn't, I couldn't follow what they were doing. Right, like it's it see this album seems all over the place, and I think that there's sprinkled throughout it are a lot of interesting, cool parts. Um, there's some really good guitar riff, gu- guitar riffs, like uh, smaller and smaller. I think it's got a really cool guitar riff. Um, everything, everything's ruined has a really pretty, p- interesting piano part layered on top of the, you know, the, the, of, the, of the song itself. That, um, you know, um, I liked, uh, yeah, I liked Midlife Crisis as well. You have a song like RV, which definitely sounds like a Frank Zappa type song. That's kind yes. of throwing mm-hmm. something, uh, you know, in there. That was like, that's interesting. Um, you know, Crack Hitler had a couple interesting parts. So it's like there's these pieces that are kind of thrown in there that, that kit catch my attention. I'm like, OK, but by the time the song ends, I'm left a little either confused I mean, crack or falling. Hitler. F- crack Hitler. <laughs> I mean, all right. I'll shut up. I was, I was listening more to the music than the, uh, the paying attention to, although I was laughing at those like jizz lobber. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, 
Yeah, I I don't. This is more of a mid for me, right? Like I I'm definitely not as down on it as John is, but like I. I, and, and I was a little disappointed probably because I wanted to like it because I think, that, you know, like I said, there was people that I remember. And I can't think of anybody specifically. That's the thing. I just remember, like, I, I, I know I've heard this here and there from people. And I'm like, I should probably listen to this record. And I just it, it was just hard for me to get into. And I, I don't think it's something that is even where I'm sitting here going, oh, I just need to listen to this more and I'll get it. Because there are elements of this of that kind of thinking to this record, right? Because it doesn't. It's not a typical yeah. record. It goes in different directions. It's kind of confusing. It's what are they trying to do here? They're throwing a lot of ideas out there, and I'm not really following it. So that just in and of itself, that's the type of record that I'm like, okay, I need to li- I need to give this several listens. Um, but I think I I think I kind of gave it enough. I I don't know if this is gonna if you know I'm gonna change much if I listen to it a couple more times. So. Um, it's definitely interesting. Um, it's its own thing. It's unique, and I, I like all of that about it. I, and and there's there's definitely parts in here that I that I do like. I agree with you, John. I like I think Midlife Crisis is a good tune. Um, I think Kindergarten's kind of a. It's got some good parts in it as well. But like, it's all these pieces that are kind of there. But like, when you put it all together, I'm still. I I wouldn't say that I'm you know I'm I'm feeling it the way that other people have right. And of course. It's it's just another one of those things on YouTube because I listened to this on YouTube a couple times when I was at work and just the comments it's like the best album ever you know it's like it's like everybody's like the biggest fan like this album means so much and clearly it's, it's you know there's an album out for every out there for everybody but um, yeah this is kind of all it's a little scatterbrain for for me to be give a give a solid thumbs up so I, I give it kind of a I'm, I'm kind of in the mid middle on this you know maybe with a slight thumbs up just because now, it's interesting you know if anything else now, but yeah before josh goes i want to write what my notes said my notes said matt will surprisingly like this album more than i think he does but josh is going to deliver because he's going to hate this album perhaps <laughs> as much as i did how'd i do josh oh man did i hate this album yes like... i knew you i knew you'd hate it even more than i did yep i felt like so part of the problem is like Epic was so kind of distinct and, and mm-hmm. that funk was so prominent in that. And it was such a catchy song that, that um, I was expecting more of, of that type of uh, sound. And so I felt like it was such a bait and switch when I started listening to this, like, what the fuck Agreed. is <laughs> the yeah. more doing? Like, why did they do like a 180 from, from what they were, on previously now i i didn't listen to the real thing so i don't know if the you know maybe the other album is also kind of experimental or whatever but i just don't know where this is coming from i feel like it's god it's just really bad it's 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 i i also thought of queen's but queen's at least had kind of you know a, a unifying theme and like yeah. a, a point and and was these... more listenable it yeah just, it it didn't offend me in the way this album did. I feel like they took all of the um, uh, wrong lessons from Frank Zappa when putting this album <laughs> together. They, they, um, there is not, you know, I feel like none of the, and then I hear like new metal in this in like all of the bad ways um, that I don't like that come that comes later and like Corn and and other bands like that and um, the there there is like an orchestral element to this which is you know plays into the prog rock that just really doesn't work i don't like matt mike Patton when he like narrates like in that move in that song everything ruins he has like this low kind of monotone narration i don't like when he does that throughout the album the um the song malpractice i all i wrote was this album is so weird and like the strings are in there and they just see it seems so um, they're trying for so many things, like Matt said. Uh, the the song "Be Aggressive" has kind of like this organ to start, and there's like this gothic feel, and then it turns into the cheerleader chant. And I'm like, okay. And then um, it's just really not what I expected. And then mm. when I listened to it, it it, it really wasn't something that. Uh, it's not fair to say that the whole uh not what i expected wasn't enough you know i I could have gotten away from that if i had started to hear other things um that i liked um the song rv i feel like he was trying to be tom waits or something too that was the the narration but there really was just 
not enough guitars. I don't know kind of what the artistic intent was. They really, I think they did really want to kind of go into the art rock vein. I can Im- not imagine seeing this band before Soundgarden or Guns N' Roses um, and, and being happy about it. <laughs> I don't know why. You know who I see them on the tour with? The group Queens that, uh, <laughs> no, can't wake up. Yeah. Don't wake oh, Evanescence. up. Evanescence. Save yeah. me. Yeah, yes. that band. Like, yeah, I feel yeah. like they'd be a double bill. Yep, that yeah, one. I really, yeah, I hate that band too. So um, when we get to them, I won't, I won't like that. But the, um, and yeah, to cap it off with the Midnight Cowboy theme and Easy, which are so out of place compared to the rest of the album. And what seems like Afterthoughts are. Um, well, in their defense, Josh, Easy was uh, not a re- on the original yeah. album. So I know. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I did like Midlife Crisis. I think the chorus in that was pretty good. That was kind of the highlight of the whole album. But really, I, it, it really dug a hole quickly for me. And then mm. I, it, I didn't get much progress coming back out of the hole um, from it. It's, it's kind of baffling. It's, I was surprised that John even had it on the list. I was even more surprised when when uh, I saw that it was critically acclaimed and sold millions of albums. I just can't imagine people who are into the real thing then like being into this album. Like it must have seemed, you know, people bought the album and you can't like return it. So like (laughs) maybe like everyone is expecting the real thing. I don't know. It's just, have we ever had a band that has gone in such a different direction from one album to the next? I I don't know if that's the case. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Oh yeah. We yeah, I mean, okay. and I, and I, I mean, we didn't really cover the real thing. I mean, you're talking about one song. I, right. I can't say yes. that they that they that's deviate fair. that much from their first, from the album we didn't <laughs> cover. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I, maybe I should. Go I mean, back and Ep- I would say Epic's kind of like it's its own thing, right? Like it's mm. not like the songs on the real thing. I do remember it enough to say that it's not like every song on on that was reminiscent of Epic. You know, Epic's okay. it's it's its own. That was kind of its own thing. It's almost okay. like a novelty song in some ways, yes. but. So that's a that's a good point. I think that's fair, and and I I should have listened to the real thing uh, before fully giving my review on this. But yeah, I I this is a a thumbs down for me. This is uh, one of the worst albums we've listened to this season, I think. Um, and uh, so yeah, you can call me a jizz lobber yep. if you want, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you an example of a band I can think of that was like as as. Uh big a thing would be like Sly and the Family Stone. Do you remember we listened to like Stand and then we listened to basically they got completely coked out. <laughs> yeah. There's a riot going on. Yeah. There's a riot going on. Here. I don't know. I, I feel like that was more, uh, less of a, a, a turn about face than, than this though. Anyway, uh, I, I can't wait to see the comments. John, tell me the comments on YouTube when, when this album gets. Yeah. Posted. The Faith and Warheads are going to hate you guys. <laughs> right. I, to me, it's just to me the my biggest complaint is that it's just, it's too for me it's too busy, um, and and I think that if they reined in some of the stuff, I think I would have liked it a heck of a lot more because, like I said, I still think that there's elements. I think that they got some really cool things going on here, but it, it was just it was hard for me to kind of, you know, land the plane, if you will. Yeah, it was just kind of it's it's yeah. it was a little too chaotic I mean, for me. It is a clear attempt to make an artistic statement. And yep. I guess from that end of things, I can always applaud someone who goes for it, right? But I think when you go all in to make an artistic statement and it doesn't succeed to me, I think when I get a take that's a little bit more, ugh, you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of like when that level of grandiosity falls flat. You know, if you just make a generic album and it falls flat, I might say, I don't like this album, but it is what it is. It actually respect you for going in more bold. So on that end, I can respect the the game, so to speak. But when you go bold and it doesn't do, you get an hour and a minute, right? Of like, mm-hmm. it's not working for me. And I think that's well. And you right. guys also have it's it's uh, Prague that type of theatrical over the top. You know, the, all the movements, the different stuff, the complexities. I mean, of that of prog rock is kind of a little bit of a bar- has been a barrier for both of you guys in general as well. I mean, there's de- there's de- different complexity is the yeah, problem for me. I've liked other prog albums. This I think too, like that comparison between them and like Red Hot Chili Peppers and like similar artists and kind of that beef or whatever that you guys had mentioned before. I mm-hmm. think that put a thing in my head too. That okay, they're going to be kind of like Red Hot Chili Peppers in some way, and and this album is not not like that so i don't think uh 
I don't know. It's I don't think it's just my expectations though. I I really don't <laughs> like this yeah. this album. My my biggest beef with Prague sometimes is that the musical complexity comes at the cost of efficiency and any sort of lyrical yeah end to it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. one thing that stands out about a lot of Prague albums is the lyrics are nonsensical and pompous. And it's okay, but <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's just, and that's why I think you can be in this lane, Matt, yeah. because you just literally don't care. But for someone who cares, it's as appalling for me <laughs> as the lack of melody might be for you in Sonic Youth, right? Sure. Like it's yeah. Just, mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's my final. <laughs> and I also, I, I'll say you were right about Josh. I would not say that I liked this album more than I thought I would. I did not like this album as much as I wanted to. Hmm. Okay. So, fair enough. But yeah. I knew you wouldn't hate it because I like I. Knew yeah, I didn't hate it. No, I didn't hate and, it. And no. this is where I talked before about that you can be inconsistent in your takes, so I have to do it. But it's not that I can always read Josh, but like there's an internal <laughs> consistency with Josh that I'm like, yeah, I can know when he's going to hear certain things the way I do. So when you were listening to this album, Matt, yeah, did you think at all about how Josh and I would react to it? Not a whole lot. Okay. No. Because the first thing I thought of was, boy, Josh is going to hate this album. <laughs> I started laughing. <laughs> yep. No. Yeah, I, it only comes up for me, like, some of the times. I just was, <laughs> it was like, question mark, question mark, question mark when, when I was when I was listening to this. And, yeah. Yeah, man. Top 100 and best ever albums, Josh, for the 90s. Wow. Yep. Okay. There you yep. go. So I didn't. I didn't pick it. It picked yeah. itself. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He's like, how did you pick this? Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Jeez. Right. I probably would have though, because it comes up on charts, so it probably would have ended up anyway. Just ahead of the Division Bell by Pink Floyd, and just behind Jar of Flies by Alice in Chains. Okay. Which is an EP. Um, and that takes us to the end of the show. 